Yo guys, what's up? This is Fiery Kobe, aka Fiery Zombies. And this comprehensive guide is brought to you by none other than Fiery Delta Armada, our client's zombie expert. Um, this is a pretty lengthy video, but it includes everything. It includes the blunder, how to get two Blunder Gats, it includes the Hell's Redeemer, the Golden Spork, and how to set up for high rounds. So, although a little bit long, you know, if you really want to get to high rounds on Mob of the Dead, this is the perfect video for you guys. And also, let me apologize for the video quality. The theater was having some issues. And so, anyways, hopefully you guys enjoy the video. Bye. Hello, everyone of YouTube. This is FGNS, Fiery Delta Armada. And I'm just going to show you Mob of the Dead and what I do to get to high rounds very everybody? quickly. Am I the only one here? The first couple rounds here, I try to um, knife and just rack up a decent amount of points, save the double points over there in the cage for a little bit. Uh, I hit one of the secret song Anyone bottles over the there in here? the back room towards the library. If you need to know that, I'm sure there are plenty of other videos on that. Uh, during this game, I only hit the secret song from the liquor bottles, so that's what I do, and <laughs> going on. There's a doorway of some kind. I can't find it now. My first main goal out of this entire video is to go easily and quickly how to get the upgraded tomahawk and the tomahawk. And right here off the right off the start I start with the first dog and I try to feed it until it's gone and as soon as I go through that one I move up to the infirmary one was there a point to all that Never hurts to have a little luck on your side. As you can see right now, I have fed the first dog, and I'm just throwing a couple grenades in the pit underneath for a free 40 points trying to get this door up here unlocked. Right around now, I would normally have the key to the warden's office and everything else unlocked. It's just that I never got around to getting it done in the very beginning, so I come back later, as you'll see, and I pick up the key and unlock everything and get all parts for the plane after I feed the three dogs and get the tomahawk. I'm an idiot and I get down here too. Hey, you got a fucking single bullet! You said you were invited for fucking supper. Ah, shit! I'm right behind the eight ball, guys. Well, that's a new one on me. Finishing what you started.
While I'm right here, since the video is cut off a little bit, I hit the second liquor bottle for the song, and I pick up one of the parts for the we acid jet, which happens parts. to be right there, even Work though you can't see it, since this is, uh, watched in theater and recorded in theater. And my goal right here is to feed the second of the dogs or wolves, and be on with my way to get the tomahawk. Who's gonna turn down a chance to double their money? And right now, I finally finished getting the second dog, so my next goal is, uh, normally I would have the key by now, but since I don't, I'm still gonna do my normal tease and head to the lift and head down to the docks with an Uzi and survive down there to feed the last dog. My foremost and immediate goal, especially when I get down there, is to get enough money for jugs, and that's normally one of the first perks I buy. And actually, correct that, it's always normally the first perk I buy, because I try not to spend money on anything else without reassurance that I have a little chance of being alive. But for the meantime, I spend around, maybe around and a half, right here on this lift, gaining some points off of all the zombies. Tips and tricks from here after I was done staying up there at the lift. Normally what I do is I go down to Afterlife right next to Jugs, but firstly I would take the key, which I normally have, and unlock the gate down there so I could do two things in this Afterlife. One, turn on Jugs and eventually buy it, and two, unlock the area for the first of the plane parts, which I normally grab. I don't do it in this game just because, uh, like I said before, I never got the key right in the beginning, but that's what normally would happen. Listen, I hope this doesn't give me a bad dose. Now, off to feeding the last of the dogs or wolf, whatever you like to call them. I've noticed it takes probably about six, six to seven zombies it needs to eat before it goes back into its little right, wall home back you. in hell. Hopefully that's a little help for you all. Now's a good time to pick a fight. Don't touch me, you fucking goofy looking bastard. You can all kiss my Irish ass. Now my mission is complete. All three of the dogs Looks and the like wolves are fed, free, and guys. off to the tomahawk in now just what? a round or two. And I hit the third and final liquor bottle to activate the secret song from Johnny Cash. Here, since I have the time, I unlock the gate up at the warden's office to grab one of the plane parts, but still no sign of a key yet. We should take this to a workbench and see what we can throw together. This looks like it's a fit with something else. I can't shoot without slugs! Normally at this part, when I'm running up here, I would unlock that gate and go in afterlife and set the numbers for the thing, but I didn't have the key spawn where it normally is, so I didn't do it right at the beginning. All this is leading to, I still need a key, and I don't know what to do with myself. Ah, shit, I've got no ammo. Try eating some lead. Get 
our lead, then we know what to do with it. And now finally, after all of the hard work, by round eight, I have the tomahawk. My one of my fastest ones I've ever done solo. I think I've had the tomahawk by round six, but I got lucky and I got double points off of a lot of zombies and was able to unlock a lot of doors pretty easily. <laughs> The wrong fight today. Now finally, after all the waiting, me and the key are about to be reunited. And it feels so good. Guys, I found the key. Well, you know us Irish. We never turn down a drink. Oxygen tanks taken care of. While I'm here about to enter all the numbers into the box to unlock the cage, there's another secret song on this map. If you enter the numbers 9, 3, and 5, there is another song that you can listen to for later in gameplay. If, if those of you that wish to listen want to, go ahead. It's a nice song, and it's available in the iTunes store. I have to throw them a little hit here and then to buy a little, make a little money. the rigging. What's next? Here's the engine, boys. Now what? So, Billy, where the fuck are you? Now, another step for all of you users that you're about to see, I always in solo, always run in this room, so I make sure I put the zombie shield right there, so whenever it breaks, I can easily just pump right around the circle and pick up a brand new one. in here. Should we bust it open? A man of my taste and experience knows how to appreciate something like this. I buy this door right here just because normally later when I'm going to grab the upgraded tomahawk, I go into afterlife and forget that that door is still locked. So I just bought it right there just to make sure I wouldn't forget. 
Now right here, everyone, I'm about to buy my fourth and final perk, which gives me a moment to explain why I choose the perks that I do. Eventually later on, I have Blender Gats, so I make sure I have Speed Clone, no matter what. Jugs is a given. Double Tap not only makes you shoot more bullets, but it makes the bullets more powerful. And then every once in a while, if I don't happen to be so lucky, I get Shock Cherry because I get trapped. And when I get trapped in a circle and I have a zombie shield on my back, what I do is I lay prone take the upgraded acid gat out and I just spray while prone until the upgraded acid gat just blows me a path meanwhile I'm still taking in no damage thanks to that zombie shield but that's why I choose the four perks I do double tap more bullet damage and faster bullets uh, jugs just because it's healthy and jugs give you more health speed cola obviously good enough speed Feed you and you're reloading up. And then Shock Cherry to help you when zombies trap you. Didn't I tell you to clear off? Step one of getting two blunder gats, one in each is your weapon, is to first get a blunder gat from the box. Another step, which you're about to see here in a little bit, is to make sure before you grab the second blender gat, this one has to be acidified. So eventually what I do is I build the acid gat kit and acidify this gun. But I'm also making another step happen at the same time. I am grabbing five skulls. You can't see these skulls in theater, sadly, when I pick them up, but I'm going to show you the places where they are right now. Right here on top of this lamppost, there is a skull. If you grab this skull, which I believe I missed my first time, so I go for it again, you'll be able to see it when you pick it up because it's, it's a blue skull on the end of your tomahawk, and you hear a little noise when you get it. I think we're gonna need. Like a little cha-ching. And I picked it up right there, and that was the first out of the five. And it's just on top of that lamppost, and if you jump and throw your tomahawk at it, you can get it that way. Some people buy the lift and get it that way. Uh, another one, which I missed my first time here too, is right here on that one. If you stand on the right side of the box right there, it is the one on the, uh, the first lamppost directly in front of you on the other side. And I missed the first time, so I'm just trying to clear a way so I can get it, which I do right here, I believe. Yep, and then I'm off to my third one. Now I'm finally about to uh, get the third skull, which is over here located on a toilet in one of the cells. It is on this one with the light on with a skull right there. There's a toilet in that back corner, which I just picked up that one very easily. Now, off to the fourth skull, uh, four out of five. This one happens to be the most tricky one, just for where it's placed. And along with the fact that I had a couple zombies with me still and I just didn't kill them right away because I figured, ah, I've done this more than a couple times, I could pick it up easily. Right there in the corner of that building, right on the roof, there is a skull. I missed it the first couple times. I believe I tried like five or six times where I actually got it. You'll hear another cha-ching noise and it sadly won't show the blue skull, but the blue skull does get stuck at the end of your tomahawk. And I believe I miss it again right here, but it is, it's a tricky one. It's right on the corner of that building. Get a little of these guys out of my way, and I should get it right here, I think. This thing yep, I got it right there. And that is the fourth out of five of the skulls you need to get the second blender gut. What I'm about to do right here is I build the acid gut kit, and like I said earlier, you're going to have to acidify the first blender gut you get out of the box hey, in order to pick up the second thing? one. So right here I acidify it, just making sure no zombies are around, even though that's the last one right there. I pick it up and I head to the fifth and final of the skulls to pick up with your tomahawk. And here we are at the fifth and final location of the tomahawk, I mean of the skulls. It's right there outside the window of the warden's office on the telephone pole, and you see the extra blender gat rise out of the desk in flames. And you have to make sure you trade it from your second weapon, that way you don't trade your acid gat away with it. So now I have one acid gat and one blender gat, as I just show right here. Have both of them. It's not a glitch. They actually meant to put it in there. Yes, you have two of them. Now, this door to the left, which I or right right now, I believe eventually I nod at, 
I try to make sure that door is never open just so zombies don't pour down there. If I ever need a quick escape route since I keep my trains running in here, I always make sure that that door is kind of let alone. That way I can have a quick and easy way out if need be. So keep that in mind if you run down here. It works either way. If you if you leave it closed or leave it open, it's just, just a nice little safety thing I like to have. Now, going on on how to upgrade your Tomahawk from the, from the, uh, whatever it's called now to, I believe, the Redeemer, Hell's Retriever right now, to the Hell's Redeemer, and I just like to throw my Tomahawk up that's play just to watch it get stuck right there, and another cool thing is while you're falling on top of the bridge, you can throw your Tomahawk again, and, like, falls in your face, and, yeah, you probably should die, but... Going on, my rule of thumb for upgrading the Tomahawk is not to shoot anything while on the bridge. And here's what I do. If you start, if you get on the bridge under round 15, I stay there three entire rounds of Tomahawking only. Three rounds. Which, since I'm here under round 15, I make sure I'm here three consecutive rounds only Tomahawking. Not doing anything else except Tomahawking zombies. Yes, there are plenty of other videos out there showing that if you kill 50 zombies with Tomahawk and go back, it should work. But it doesn't work all the time. So far, this is the only method I have been able to find, and I've tested it more than enough times that it works no matter what. So if you're under round 15, stay there three rounds. If you're anywhere between round 15 and 20 and you show up on the bridge, you can stay there two rounds, only two rounds, and kill the amount of zombies in two rounds. Now, if you show up anything after round 20, you can, only, you can stay there one entire round, and upgrade the tomahawk after that one round. So far, I have gotten nothing other than this as results, but if you all happen to find results of your own, please post them in the comment section below. My clan and myself will probably be more than grateful to hear if you find anything else that works. And now you can see it is round 16, I started 14, made it through all round 14, all of round 15, and now I'm here on round 16. I managed to pack a punch both of my weapons, the Acid Gat upgraded now and the Blender Gat upgraded now, and I am starting to finish out the round tomahawking only, and I am completely set now. I have all four of my perks, two pack punch weapons, I'm finishing up pack a punching the tomahawk, and I'm about after right about the same time I'm upgrading my Tomahawk, I get the Golden Spork. The Golden Spork, which is a one-hit kill as a melee through round 34. Or, sorry, not through, until round 34, through round 33. Here I am at the end of round 16 going on to 17. Now, however many rounds you stay here, depending on what round you get here, I make sure the round after you end, the numbers on the bottom left-hand part of your screen show up as the next round before I execute myself and go back to the main area to go on with what I need to do. And as you can see, Brutus dies right there, and the world's all happy again. Now, the next couple of steps I kind of do with the Golden Spork and the Tomahawk at the same time. What you should do is you should throw your Tomahawk into the pit underneath the dog, but I don't do that just yet, just because I want to get the Golden Spork set uh, spot set up. So, and you need a tomahawk in order to do that, and I kind of do both at the same time here, so bear with me. First, you have to remove this poster in this jail cell near the warden's office by tomahawk. You go into afterlife. You can't see this in theater, but there is a spoon where you go, because after you remove that poster, there's a little alcove, which you can walk into right near the afterlife box right here, and right where my thing is, right now my thing, you can hear a laugh, and that's because I shocked a spoon. Your first step is to shock... There's a spoon on the ground, that's for the spork. Now I dispose of my tomahawk for later, for just to get it upgraded later. And you won't have a tomahawk the rest of the round, you can't get your upgraded tomahawk this round, you have to wait until the next round comes, which is round 18, so I'll see you back at the beginning of round 18. Now it is finally the end of round 17, and I'm going on to round 18, I wait for the numbers to pop up just for security, I go into Afterlife, and ta-da! If you go back to where you picked up the Tomahawk originally, except this time in Afterlife, you'll be able to pick up the brand new, upgraded Tomahawk. The Hell's Redeemer. You can only pick it up in Afterlife, and you know you did it right because it glows blue. If it doesn't glow blue, then you have to go back to the, um... 
back to the Golden Gate Bridge and do your tomahawk steps over again. You might have not missed a couple of zombies or so on and so forth, but once you get the hang of it though, you'll be able to get the upgraded tomahawk very easily. Moving on with the steps for the Golden Spork, after I get my tomahawk back, I go to the cafeteria right here, and in the back of the cafeteria, behind the windows, after you shock the electric spoon, a spork will pop up back there on the table, which you can only pick up with your tomahawk. And you'll be able to hear Brutus speak a little bit, and that's how you know you picked it up. And then from there, you go up to the infirmary, and there's this tub. It's like a tub filled with blood. There's not much there. It's the only tub in the room. It's the tub where the box can spawn. It's the last one before you walk into the big open area before you go to the roof. I'm about to go up there, and you hit X on the tub. And what it does is it takes the spoon that you picked up and it stirs it around the blood. And it lets you know you're ready for the next step, which you're about to see right here. You'll see the spoon stir. That's how you know you're ready for the next step to get the golden spork. Now, the next step for the golden spork is you have to be down here in the shower room and you have to have an acid gat. It does not have to be upgraded. Repeat, does not have to be upgraded. If you don't want to keep the upgrade acid gat, fine. It just has to be an acid gat. Mine happens to be upgraded. And what you do is you kill zombies down here after that step until you hear the creepy Samantha laugh again. I believe it's Samantha laugh. Either way, it's a creepy laugh that you don't want to hear. You just have to kill zombies with the acid gat down there until that happens. It probably around this rate where I am right now. It'll probably take a round, round and a half at most. And the more zombies you kill, the better. If you kill them closer to the center where all the curtains are, that's even more better. It just needs blood and it needs carnage. Now, just to go over the beginning steps again for the spork, you go into afterlife after you come back from the bridge, and after you've removed the poster in one of the jail cells, and you shock the spoon that's back behind the cells. The second step, then, is you pick up a spork from the cafeteria, and then you go up to the infirmary and hit X on the bathtub. And then, now you're finally right here, acid gatting zombies until they die. Now I'm right here, near the end of round 19, and I'm, I'm still still using the acid gat and killing zombies, and sometime in the next minute, uh, you hear the creepy laugh because I've killed so on and so many zombies, and that'll lead me to the next step for the Golden Spork. And there you have the creepy laugh. And that lets you know you're ready for the next step for the spork, the golden spork. You, it's the very last thing you do, and it's not even that hard. You remember that tub that you saw the golden spoon in earlier? Yeah, well, you go back to that tub and you hit X on it one more time, and what it does is it lets a hand raise up. And I noticed this time that the hand, maybe or maybe not, but it looks like it's almost flipping you off. And it's a hand that raises out of the tub, and it raises up a golden spork with it. And you'll be able to see it right now. And once it fully raises, you can pick the golden spork up. And then I show you right here, it's one hit kill. And it's one hit kill through round 33 up to round 34. That zombie's dead. And so is that one. And so are all the rest, so on and so forth. And it's very useful, because it, if you ever get trapped then, uh, earlier, on the earlier rounds, you can just use your melee and get zombies and move them right out of your way. So now... It is round 19 going on to round 20. You have all four perks. You have the upgraded Tomahawk. You have two Blender Gats, both of them upgraded, one acid, one not. You have the Spork, if I didn't already say that, and you're well set. And from now on, I just stay here in this room, and I enjoy myself. Hello, everyone. It is now round 25 going on to round 26. I'm about to show you what I use to get on very high rounds. To start off... I am outside the cafeteria, and I make sure I'm out here, that way the zombies, most of them, or at least the majority of them, all spawn out here, outside of the cafeteria. I stay out here until, like, I have one or two before I run in there, just to make sure a decent amount of them will spawn out here. And what I do is I run through, get through those zombies, and turn on the acid trap, that way... All the zombies from out there are taken through the acid trap, and I don't have to worry about them. I kind of stand near the acid trap just to kind of make sure they spawn outside there as much as possible, and until the acid trap wears off. And, yeah, a few zombies will spawn in here, but not nearly as much as the ones that are still spawning out in the room behind me. Now, what I do from here on, from all the high rounds, is 
after this acid trap, or after I get a little upheld by zombies, which right about there happen to be, I go around and I use my tomahawk and my non-acid gat, just my upgraded blender gat, and I clear paths for me, and I run a circle in here until the acid Don't trap comes again. And I keep on turning that acid trap on through the rounds when I need it. Uh, especially everything past round 30, round 34. I use the acid trap every time I pass by and it's ready, I turn it on to keep the zombies out of here. But on lower, on a relatively lower round like this, when the acid trap's ready, I, I try not to use it as much. Um, but you'll see me again in a couple rounds, and this is just the beginning of what I start doing for adding the high rounds. I just start making them spawn out there and clear a path in this circle, and whenever I need a zombie shield, I just pick it up on my way over, and I'll see you in a couple rounds. Hello, everyone. This is round 31 of my high round strategy. As you can see, I probably have a behind me when I look in a second. And after you use the acid trap in the beginning, if you have another horde and the round's lasting a while, either I normally shoot the acid gat right here, get them all stuck and set the trap off, or I just do a little run around right here, make sure all the, all the zombies are hoarded up. I go back here, and then I run straight through and turn the acid trap on and watch them all disintegrate in front of my eyes, and I kind of laugh a little bit. And there they all go, and you can do that over and over and over again on the high rounds when you just get bunches of waves built up and the acid trap's ready to go again. It just helps the round go by quicker. Even though it doesn't count towards zombie kills on your part, it helps the rounds just speed by, especially after round 30 when, when it becomes troublesome and a lot of zombies start pouring out. And hello everyone, it is now round 34, where the spork is now a two-hit kill, and I almost stopped using it except for insta-kills, and the upgraded tomahawk is still just as wonderful. If you pulse it once, just hold the left left bumper in until you see a glow below you once. If you let it pulse once, it's still a one-hit kill for an extremely long time. Uh, I don't know the round precisely yet, but round 50 and 52, right around that area, it, the Tomahawk is a two pulse, which you just hold it down until you see two pulses, and then it's an automatic kill on two pulses. And I still need to test out to find exactly when it's a three pulse only. But the Tomahawk, basically, as long as you use it, if you have it and you run out of ammo, you're set because the Tomahawk can kill. Yeah, it's a little more time consuming. But so is running around in the acid trap. But the Tomahawk is a gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous thing that this map has on it. So. Use it to your advantage, and from here on, I you normally either use the tomahawk to move zombies out of my way when they get in my way, or I dodge them, or I just blow them out by my blender gap. But I try to start conserving ammo because eventually there comes a point where you're wondering when the next max ammo will be and if you'll be able to make it from there on, and so on and so forth. And I just leave the zombies here, ask if I them, integrate them, all the normal stuff, but. Thanks for watching, hopefully this video was a help. Keep up to date on the FDNS YouTube account for anything multiplayer or zombies related. And stay up to date, and you'll see hopefully a how to get past 50 easily guide coming out soon. Hopefully by me. Peace.